My name is Jeff H. Seip, and I have over 10 years of recruiting experience, including five years at Google. In this video, we are going to cover how to answer any behavioral interview question. What I really want to focus on today is let's just do a deep dive. I'm going to give you the high level steps and then the high level keys to success. And then we will do a deeper dive into each one of those concepts. If you like my content, please like. If you have any comments, please comment below. And if you like my overall content, please subscribe. The eight steps are restate the question, present options. When it's a very generic behavioral question, then you're going to go into stars, situation, task, action, results, and then follow that up with learnings and follow-up questions. So those are the eight steps you're going to take. The only difference would be if the results are super impactful, you save the company tons of money, tons of time, you had a huge process implementation, you'll start with the result and then you'll reiterate it again when you get to the results section. So it technically can be eight or nine steps. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Then let's flip over. There are nine keys to success too. So one, dynamic example, just make sure the example is super dynamic. Two, position specific whenever possible. Three, you're always trying to chop down, so you're trying to take something broad, especially if it's a generic question, and narrow it. The fourth item is continually implement what's being asked in the question. Five, I need an appropriate level of detail, don't make me guess. Six, change negative words to positive words. Seven, identify themes. Eight, prepare, practice, and time yourself. And nine, framing when you don't have the ideal example. We'll get a little bit more into that one as well. So let's flip back to the steps. So item one, restate. This is a topic I've covered and I'll throw an info card up there to attach to that video, but restating really helps your brain start to organize and clarify the data. And it also allows for your interviewer to potentially narrow your focus. So the pro tip here is just change the wording a little bit in your favor when the interviewer asks you a question if you have a narrower path for them. So specifically, let's focus and work off the question. Tell me about a difficult situation. I might restate this question knowing I have a really good example with an internal colleague. And so I might restate, so Jane, you're asking me about a challenging situation with a colleague. If Jane does not correct you, boom, you've narrowed your focus. If Jane does correct you to say, it can be any example of a difficult situation. That's a great, great segue into item two, where you're going to present options. And so if we stay focused on this, tell me about a difficult situation, this is a super generic behavioral interview question that could take a number of different directions. When you get these types of questions, it's just really necessary to ask your interviewer what direction they want you to take. So. Do you want this to be a project or a program I worked on? Do you want this to be a difficult situation um, with an internal employee, with an external employee? Do you want me to focus more on the business side or the technical side? Do you want me to focus on a stakeholder relationship, a relationship with somebody higher up, etc.? Right? And yes, this is a lot of questions to ask, but your interviewer in their head might have been thinking, external business relationship and you mention those items and then boom you're headed down their direction and again we're taking something like this and we're really narrowing it down we really need to pause on this item we don't know what our interviewer wants to hear so we have to ask them and right we got to go back to these two key steps right if we don't get an answer from our interviewer, we have to just make sure we're using our most dynamic example, and if our most dynamic example is position specific, even better. Item three, let's dive right into the situation. My top two pieces of advice for the situation, and this comes when working with clients, is brevity is super important. The story will come out in the actions. So your situation should be 15 to 30 seconds tops. 30 seconds is probably too much. And then detail. And so that's getting back to one of our critical key items, which is just help me visualize it so I have greater connectivity to the answer and the example. So for example, 
let's go back to this question that we started with. I would say, hey, Jane, the difficult situation was with our vendor. They stopped paying for their services and we needed to work to get the payment up to date before continuing to work with them. Okay, nine seconds for that example. Let's go and provide a little bit better example that's about 15 seconds long. Jane, the difficult situation was with our laptop manufacturing vendor in Korea. For the first time in 10 years, they stopped paying for their advertising services and we needed to secure $2 million in back payments in order to not cancel all of their global ad campaigns. These six additional seconds gave me so much more clarity and that level of detail. Now I'm thinking about, okay, wow, a difficult situation is made even more difficult when the client is overseas. I'm in the facility seeing them manufacture laptops. Um, I know they're a long-standing customer, so I know we've had a long-standing relationship. The amount owed is significant, and obviously if they can't pay, it's going to significantly impact a major client. So these visuals just have me way, way more invested. And that's a great segue into item four, task. The real goal for this item is just for the interviewer to understand what was your specific role because the situation is highlighting a challenge, right? But you want to be talking about what your specific role was. So again, going back to this example, I had two major objectives, um, obtain this back payment and figure out if making payments moving forward was going to be a challenge. This is really generic but it identifies your specific role. The task should be one to two sentences tops and you get through it and you move right into item five, the actions. This is where you should spend at least half of your answer, more likely two thirds of your answer. This is really your bread and butter. And in reality, the actions will tell the story. And I think that this is a big misconception because people go into these answers and they think they have to give all this background, but the background will come out if your actions are clearly defined. And so within actions, it's really important that they're chronological. Really don't be jumping around from item to item because I don't have a lot of connectivity to your example. It's personal to you. So make sure, again, the actions are chronological and then they are clearly defined. So have three or four or five clearly defined actions. And then lastly, just make sure that each action has follow-up items along with it. And so, for example, let's go back to our manufacturing vendor. So, Jane, the first action I took was I needed to get the historical context. So like what had happened with past billing, what had happened with recent communications, and could I connect with any recent or former points of contact internally to find out a little bit more information. Action two, I really needed to touch base with the point of contact at our manufacturer. Her name was Ji Wu. And with Ji Wu, the first thing I needed to do was I wanted to get her on video. So we got together on video. I did create a Google presentation for her so she could see the clear agenda, the clear questions I had, etc. cetera. Um, I asked a ton of questions in there and then we left that meeting with a specific five point action plan for moving forward. The next action I took was then we needed to create the next steps. And so I executed on all those actions. Um, I connected with multiple stakeholders. This was internally and externally at GWU's organization. And then we created a systemized approach for back payment and a plan for future payments. Of course, I'd go into a little bit more detail, but I want to keep it high level for this video. But you can see each action had a few bullets associated with it. And that's a great segue into item six, which is our results. Don't ever downplay the importance of results. If you don't tell me very specifically what the ultimate result was, then the whole answer is a waste of time. We really want to get to these great results. And that can be happy client, kudos, money saved, time saved, just an amazing success story, process improvements, etc. Tell me why the results are fantastic. And if it's an ongoing project, tell me the results to date and why those are fantastic. And so 
Again, we'll go back to this scenario. And so, Jane, the first result was we were able to see, receive the entire back payment within two weeks based on my initial conversation with, with Yi Wu. Uh, then secondly, we were able to create a better process around getting payments. Third, obviously maintaining a relationship with one of our biggest clients was critical. And lastly, uh, one of the biggest results was a process improvement. We realized there was a missing process within our tools. I got great kudos from our client and, and it actually yielded a promotion for me because it was so impactful for our organization. So one critical item to mention with results is again, if the results are as fantastic as they were in this situation, you might present options. Then instead of starting with the situation, you start with the results. Jane, I wanna provide an example of a challenging situation we had where really I was able to get $2 million back for the company in a two week span of time and implement some great new processes. The situation was. So sometimes when the results are so fantastic, you wanna draw your interviewer in, especially when there's numbers tied to them. Numbers always kind of get people perked up and excited. Item seven, learnings and applications of learnings. So it's really important that you get to this step and because some interviewers are so familiar with the STAR method, I want you to segue right from results into learnings. So literally without pausing, just get right into it because companies hire continual learners, period. And that's across the board for any company. You just always have to be talking about what you learned. And then again, if you can talk about how you applied that learning, even better. And so for this scenario, we might say, hey, I learned the importance of presenting data. And then the second piece I really learned was if we dig deeper into our systems, like do we have the tools in place? Have we created the process to look at our tools to make sure that they're ideal? And that documentation actually has helped our HR systems recently. So I've been able to apply that documentation from this example to help the organization in another area, which was absolutely amazing um, for everyone. Item eight, follow-up questions. This seems to be an incredibly difficult step for my clients, but follow-up questions keep you talking about something you know a lot about. These examples happen to you. So it's really, really easy to focus on these follow-up questions. And so there's really four great outcomes. Questions are a clear end to your answer. They do help you be more brief because then you know you're specifically going to ask follow-up questions on the items that you might not have been able to drill down enough into. Um, they allow you, again, to talk a little bit longer about what you know and they might help identify themes that your interviewer is interested in. I'll talk about this a little more in a second, but if your interviewer is always asking, yeah, tell me more about the technical, you are probably going to want to really focus on more technical examples. And that theme will pop up and it will help you have better success. So, for example, with these follow-up questions, You'd want to ask maybe if they wanted to hear a little bit more about the digging you did on the historical context piece. Um, they might want to know a little bit more about your initial meeting with Ji Wu. They might want you to provide a little bit more on how you found and identified the challenges within the tools, or is there anything else you can cover? But don't go to that last generic question. Really, specificity in the questions is super important. So now let's quickly flip over to the nine keys because these eight or nine steps you're gonna take depending on how you implement the results are important, but you need these follow-up keys to make sure that you're doing everything right. We touched on all of them, so let's go through them briefly. Item one, dynamic example, no matter what, just use your best example, period. Even if it's not position specific, dynamic examples are dynamic. Um, I can tell you the example I used in one of my for one of my GCA questions at Google had nothing to do with being a recruiter, but it was just the best example I had, and it ended up yielding a positive result. Now, of course, item two, position specific whenever possible. Yes, like if you know the role is totally customer facing, right? You're going to be spending 80, 90 percent of your time chatting with external customers. Your examples, the more they can be external facing and customer facing, 
the better. Item three, taking a broad topic and narrowing it down. This is just about presenting options, and I think it is about making it position specific. Those are two really great ways you can narrow it down. The more narrow, you just want to take any of these very high-level generic concepts and push them in a little bit. It's going to be help you just be laser-focused with your interviewer. Continual implementation of what's being asked. So I didn't say enough of this as I went through that difficult situation example. You really need to reiterate that word. Again, you're probably going to change that word from difficult to challenging, right? Because you want it to sound really positive. But you want to keep reiterating that you're answering the question throughout. This is really important so your interviewer feels connectivity that you're really answering the question. Item five, appropriate level of detail. I don't want you to add a ton of extra words, but I just want you to add a little bit more detail so I can visualize it and connect with it. So one of the big ones is sitting in a conference room. Help me understand like who's in the conference room. Are you whiteboarding? Are you using a presentation? Like how long were you in there? Those simple details they go from me just kind of thinking about it to putting me in the room. And so I really love that example. People talk about meeting with others, stakeholders, external clients, but I never get this level of detail. A couple of extra pieces really give me great connectivity. Item six, changing negative words into positive words. So in this one, you just change the word difficult to challenging. Challenging has a more positive connotation and it just upticks the person. They don't even know why, but use of positive words is critical. Item seven, identifying themes. Again, if you can really, really figure out what your interviewer likes to talk about, and it might be people, it might be technology, it might be process, identify that from your follow-up questions and then implement it. That can be so impactful because then you're actually asking less questions and you're really narrowing down on what seems to be a strong interest for your interviewer. Item eight, prepare, practice, and time yourself. So I'm going to throw a Google Doc down in the description. Use that to help you get organized. But you have to prepare. You have to practice these examples. And you have to time them because you might find that you're giving these really, really long-winded examples. And you just want to chop down on your time but writing them down and saying them out loud or practicing them with another person is what success really looks like. The last piece that we didn't talk about is framing. That's item nine. And so with framing, it just means if you didn't ever have a difficult situation, but you had this challenging process improvement that you needed to make, you would say, hey, Jane, I have this challenging process improvement that I needed to make that's really top of mind for me and has great connectivity to the role. Do you mind if I provide that example? So you've acknowledged to Jane, hey, it's a little bit different from what you're asking, but it gets at the core of what Jane might want to hear because you just don't have the perfect example. Now, difficult situation, obviously you probably would, but there's going to be other scenarios where you just don't have an ideal match. So just another thing to keep in mind. Wow. Um, as I kind of put this video together, it just kept getting longer and longer. But I work with a lot of clients and these items, if you can put all this together, it's a lot of pieces. But if you put all these pieces together, you will crush this component. And for most companies, this is more than 50% of the questions. This might make up 60, 70, 80% of the questions. So it's really important that you take the time and focus on these items. I really hope this helps. If you like my content, please like. If you have any comments, please comment below. And if you like my overall content, please subscribe. Thank you so much.